right, welcome back. This is gonna be the last video for the front end developer course. Again, congratulations for sticking around. Hope this was helpful for you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cover some best practices here uh, from top to bottom, primarily looking at theme development and the kinds of things that you want to uh, keep in mind and consider when you are building your theme projects, but also working with your templates, your fragments, or any other applications uh, that you'll be building for the platform, okay? All right, so for our theme, it's going to be always recommended that you stick with that styled base theme, okay? And the reason for this, again, is because that clay base, and if you guys remember from the earlier videos, the clay base being uh, the set of SCSS partials that include that clay implementation, is included in the styled base theme, okay? Now, if you create a theme project for the first time, that's gonna be the default, okay? So the recommendation is leave the default and include that clay base, modifying components if you need to, okay? And we uh, looked at how to do that in the third chapter of these videos, okay? For the portal normal HTML source file, go ahead and make sure that that file remains uncluttered, okay? So the way we talked about doing this in our own uh, theme example was we went ahead and created some new free marker files and simply included them in our portal normal FTL, okay? This is actually a good uh, practice in general for all of our files. We wanna keep things modular and we wanna keep the source files uncluttered, okay? The same is true for our custom.scss. We wanna make sure that that is uncluttered as well. So the way we did that in our theme is we uh, modified some of the partials and then we imported them into our custom.scss, okay? You can also create new partials if you wanna add new elements or components of styling. Um, and import that into the custom.scss. And again, that's ultimately going to be read in the main.scss in our build or base theme, okay? Uh, for the main.js as well in our themes, we wanna make sure that all of the global JavaScript goes there, okay? If you need to be more modular with your JavaScript here as well, you can go ahead and simply uh, make sure to require whatever other JavaScript files you have. So again, it's gonna be similar to that include or the import for our HTML and CSS, okay? In general, we do recommend using semantic JavaScript when you can. Um, it's just gonna be more maintainable and easier to upgrade in the future. Uh, but that being said, you do have some other JavaScript frameworks that you can take advantage of as well, um, including Metal.js, Lodash, and jQuery. So make sure to keep those in mind as uh, you write your JavaScript in your themes, okay? When it comes to images in your themes, you wanna make sure that uh, we're not adding large images or image content in there. Uh, for our own theme example, what we did is we added just a simple screenshot, thumbnail, and our favicon ico. Um, if you wanna add any more images, make sure they're image sprites or image maps, depending on where you're coming from, okay? And then you can use CSS to go ahead and use those images throughout the theme, okay? So that's gonna be uh, the best way of handling images in your theme. For larger images, for uh, content, things like carousel images, things like that, that can all be dealt with and added to the content management system, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? And when configuring the theme, we talked about the ability to uh, add the resources importer, okay, or the site initializer. If you are using the resources importer, uh, while some of you may know you can use LARs, LAR files, for uh, the site structure and the content, um, that is not a great idea when it comes to upgrading. It's always a good practice to use the sitemap.json. While it may take a little bit more work, it is more maintainable, and when you upgrade, it's going to be less of an issue as LARs are version dependent, okay? All right, now when it comes to uh, some other uh, recommendations or best practices, ultimately that's going to be determined by your business, okay? So we do have things like lexicon, which again, if you take a look at that experience language, we do have some strong recommendations for how uh, things should be written, how text should be added, and how the style should be implemented to fit into the life rate ecosystem. But again, ultimately that will be up to you and your business and the requirements that you have for applying branding to the life race site. So keep that in mind as you guys take what you've learned from here and you add your own custom branding to your life rate platform, okay? Remember to keep things modular, 
Okay, that could be true in our themes, that could be true in our templates. We talked about our generic templates, which can be used alongside of our other web content templates to keep things modular. So this is always going to be the best approach for maintainability and moving forward, okay? Remember the SAS syntax and variables available to you through Bourbon. You can use those in your theme, okay, to be more efficient in your CSS. And in your templates and fragments, you can take advantage of using those clay and bootstrap classes, okay? And again, remember, in your theme, if you want to modify a component to fit your branding, you can do that. You can modify any of the clay components in your theme, and when deployed, every, anytime you use those classes, uh, it's going to look exactly how you expect from the branding in your theme. Okay. All right, in JavaScript, keep those frameworks in mind. Again, semantic JavaScript is gonna be the best way moving forward, but in the case where the frameworks provide uh, the tools that you need to accomplish your goals, you do have those available and developers can also add in their own third-party libraries as well, okay? And remember in your themes, if you wanna have some interaction between uh, the admins or the content team, and the front end developers, you can uh, configure your theme with some theme templates, some color schemes, give them some options to work with and give them uh, the ability to make those decisions on their own, okay? So congratulations on completing the course. You are now a front end developer. You can go out there, you can create your themes, you can create your templates. If you wanna try your hand at creating some JavaScript modules, you can do that as well, okay? The best way to learn how to implement these things is ultimately through your own experience working out these details.